One. Good. My son didn't give me the signal, but I guess we're on and live. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, today is an amazing day. I don't even know where we are. Fourth Sunday in January of the brand new year, 2023. God, we are so thankful. We're so grateful to be able to be here today. And so I invite you all in the room to help me, help us lift the name of Jesus super high today to give him everything that he is due, all the praise, all the worship that is within us that we're able to give. Out there in live stream land, we're not leaving you out. We invite you to do the very same thing from wherever you are, in your living room, in your car, at work. Lift the name of Jesus high with us today. Are we ready? Yes? Okay, well, let's go. Let's go. God, we're thankful. Search the world, but it couldn't feel me. Man's empty praise, pleasures and free, but never enough. And you came along, put me back together. Now I'm satisfied here in your love. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing more better than you. There's nothing. God of the mountain, hallelujah, is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me in. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing better than you. There's Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Jesus, thank you, Lord God. Oh, we lift your name today, God. You are the only way who can make those ways for us. You are the only one who can turn our situation from bad to good. You are the only one who can lift us out of the grave. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. If praise is all we have, praise is all we will give, Lord. We thank you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We love to lift your name. Yes, Lord. There's nothing greater than calling on your name, Jesus. It's everything we need. It is the least that we can do. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad you came to save us. Sing it with us. Oh, Lord, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises.
can we take a moment and just lift the Lord's name on high? If God's done anything for you, can you lift his name on high? Come on now. I know he did something for you this morning. He woke you up. He put you in your right mind. He provided for your family. Come on now. We got to give it up for Jesus this morning. He's good, ain't he? And his mercy endures forever. Hey, let us take a moment before I dive into the uh, exposition and, and just say good morning to somebody. Go ahead and shake somebody's hand. Welcome them here to the Circle Church. Tell them who you are and how good God has been to you. i give you about a minute or so just to say good morning to everybody. and sons, I see the parks, I see Sister Marjorie, Sister Daphne, Meredith, Cujo, Cam, the Harris's, the Tejadas, I got your name right this morning, I, that's it, that's it, man, I love y'all, I love y'all, I know Pastor Smith's going to say and echo the same, we are about to start after this Sunday, uh, meeting back again in, in our city groups and we pray that you all decide to get involved and I understand uh, I myself we have busy schedules we have schedules all over the place I know brother Rodney works quite a bit I do too but we're, we're trying to set aside a time where we can grow in God together right and so it's really really important that if you want to grow in your Christian journey, you have to dedicate yourself to the discipleship process. You have to find time to read that word. You have to find time to pray. You have to find time to get with other brothers and sisters in Christ who can help you get through some of the challenges and the struggles that you're going through. Because it's not designed for you to be alone in that. And so when I think about all the temptation and all the challenges and trials all of us are going to face this year, we're going to be able to get through it with discipleship. We're going to be able to get through it with one another. And so, and this, this lesson comes as I'm thinking about, you know, as we continue our, our praying and our fasting here as a, as a church, uh, ran across Matthew chapter 4 and Jesus himself teaches us in Matthew chapter 4 that even he was tempted but he also gave us the formula on how to fight temptation and the word of God reads then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, our Lord fasted. Afterward, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, And it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Highlight that in your Bible or in your app. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and their hands shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written. You shall not worship the Lord. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. 
Then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. Now, a constant theme every time Satan tempted our Lord is our Lord said, it is written. I want you to think about that. As you go through struggles in your marriage, remember what it is written about marriage. As you go through struggles while being single, remember what it says about being single in the word of God. As you go through struggles with your finances this year, remember what it says in the word of God about finances. As you go through struggles of any kind this year, my encouragement to each of us is we will look and see what is written about any of the struggles that we go through in 2023. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, it is important that we dedicate ourselves to the discipleship process in 2023. And so as we continue to worship, let us remember that God loves us. God has already written everything that we need in his word to guide us and to lead us to the purpose that he has for each of our lives this morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much that you not only gave us your son and you not only left the Holy Spirit, but you gave us your word that we can continue to learn from you, to grow from you, and to share your love with others. We pray this morning that the Holy Spirit would fill this place. Not just the building, Father God, because it is the people who make up the church. And so we ask you, Father God, that you would fill your hearts and minds of your people this morning, Father God. Father God, that when we hear the worship and when we hear the word, we know that it is the helper that has sent them both, Father. Then, Father God, we just thank you as we, we look out and we see how you're growing the church, Father God. You are the one that are sending the people, Father God, with the gifts that they will share with the body and the community. And we just ask you, Father God, that you would continue to disciple them and work on them and have grace and mercy and favor and kindness and forgiveness and love for your people here this morning, God. Give us the ability, Father God, to walk with them and to learn with them, and to teach them, and may they teach us. We thank you, Father God, for your people. And lastly, Father God, we lift up the man of God who's going to come and preach the word of God, Pastor Smith. And we just ask you, Father God, that you would touch his mind, that you would touch his mouth, that you would touch his memory, that everything that you have poured out to him this week, that he would pour it out here at this altar. And Father God, that he would preach it with power and authority, but with love, grace, and compassion. So we thank you this morning, Father God, for your presence. We thank you this morning, God, for the people that you have sent. And we thank you this morning, Father God, for the pastor who is going to preach your word. And we promise you, Father God, in all that we do, we will give you all the praise all the honor, and all the glory. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you for being our way out of nowhere. Ooh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. <laughs> and we can trust you. You have never, ever lied to us, never, ever failed us, never, ever forsaken us. But you've always been here, helping, making a way, God. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. I worship you, I worship you, 
And you are here Working in this place I worship you I worship you And you are here Moving, moving in our this I worship you I worship you, and you are here, working, working in this place, yes, I worship you, I worship you, cause you are our way made, miracle work, Father's keep, light in the darkness.
you to the side so we can see your way anything that's in the way push it to the side so we can see your way it's the only way Ooh. it's the only way that's here it's the only way so if you're trying to figure out what way am I going to do it what way will we come out of this? He's the only way. Lay down your strength. Lay down your ideas. Lay down your plan. He's the only way. He's the only way. He's the proven way. He's the proven way. If he's ever done it for you before, then you know he's the proven way. He's the proven way. He loves us too much to let us down. To let us go astray, he's the only way. 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 Ay, 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. 
Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. feel like it's appropriate for the moment and I'll explain more about it in a minute um, Pastor Floyd could you come and pray for us just real quick while we're still in the spirit we need to hear from heaven I know we got something to say Amen as I was sitting there and I even as we were coming, you know, God put on my heart that we should expect miracles. Miracles, signs and wonders. You know, when, when John was in jail, he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, was he the one? And, and, and Jesus sent a message back to John, and I'm paraphrasing. He said, the blind are seeing. The deaf are hearing. And, and, and the word is going forth. And, and I just want to encourage Circle Church here. I heard the minister speaking about your groups that as you come together, and I'm going to pray here, I'm just speaking what the Lord put on my heart. And he says that as you come together and as you do the work of disciples, he said in Mark, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. And that's what we need to expect, that when we go forth in the name of Jesus, that when we speak his word, he will honor his word with signs and wonders. He, he will do things in your lives. He will do things in your community. And he will show the world that you know him. And he's going to send down a great anointing and, 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 a, and a power of the Holy Spirit amongst you. And see, when the Holy Spirit comes, he, he, he has no picks and choices. He will use whomever is willing. He, he'll, he'll, look, he'll use a little child. These two boys right here. If, if they're led of the Spirit to go and lay their hands on somebody and God says they're going to be healed, guess what's going to happen? God is going to heal. Father God, we just come this morning in the wonderful, glorious, and magnificent name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we just thank you this morning that you are here with us. Father, we thank you that you come to us in many ways. You come to us as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, El Elyon, El Shaddai, God. That's who you are, Lord. And God, we ask you this morning to manifest yourself in the midst of this service. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus to move, Lord. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus to bless the circle church. 
God, we ask you, God, that I know without a shadow of a doubt that there are gifts among them. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they would do as Paul told young Timothy, to stir them up, Lord. To stir up the gifts of God that are in them, Lord. And, Father, I believe in the name of Jesus that, that when they do, and they will, that, God, you're going to do great and mighty things. God, you got great and mighty things for Pastor Vincent, Lord. God, I just bless him right now in the name of Jesus. God, he and I come through a great man of God who is in heaven right now, God. I pray, God, that as the anointing was upon Pastor A.J. Mansfield, that we will receive that same anointing, God, and we will go forth and do mighty exploits in the name of Jesus. Father, bless your people this morning. Let your power flow, Lord, right now. God, where people are in need of miracles right now, God, if they say, Lord, I receive, give it to them right now in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord, that God, your word says that when we cry out unto you, your word says when the righteous cry, the Lord hears them and deliver them from all their fears. God, I know this morning that I'm in the midst of righteous people. And God, we cry out unto you. Have your way. Send your power. Send your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Before I get in trouble, kids, you're dismissed. <laughs> um, just in case they want to make sure you hear from the Lord this morning. Hear me out, y'all. Uh, hear, 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 hear me out on this. Y'all better lay hands on those babies. You, you, you better do it. You better do it. Because they are prime and ready. They're paying attention. They already know. They're already seeing. And um, y'all ever have those moments where and, and again, I don't want to get in trouble saying this, but you f you feel as if um, somebody who's no longer here came to sit sit down with you. Have those moments when you feel like you know a loved one who's gone showed up. You don't know how to explain it. You don't know how to articulate it. But it wasn't just for the purpose of um, comfort. It was for purpose. Uh, I say that to say, um, God knows how to send people to affirm what you're feeling. Y'all wouldn't even know that I was thinking about my childhood pastor this morning. And then he prayed it in the prayer. Um, and when I was knowing CJ's age, I was still in the front row at church, watching everything my pastor did, had a relationship with him. And I knew then what God had called me to do. Then, so hear me, what's going on back there matters. And what's going on in here and what we say in front of them matters. You quite literally are speaking their future upon them. So you better speak it well. I'm a living witness that they're paying attention. So I'll make sure they got a lesson and we got a lesson. So... 
God, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your presence here. Be with us now as we open up your word. We love you. We give this time back to you. It's not ours. It's yours. In that name, amen. Amen. Let's clap those hands for the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. All right. If you've got your Bibles, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Thank you, worship team. You've ushered in us to the presence of God. Um, hallelujah. While you're getting there, um, I, don't, I don't know if you know this right now, especially those who are, hey, y'all, we, we have made it to day 15. We're at day 15 in this 21 days of prayer and fast. Y'all, we almost there. Y'all, we almost there. Now, I, I want to tell you that um, I think the general public knows that we are in prayer and fasting right now. Um, let me tell you why. Um, because it's marketing everywhere for us to act a fool. Um, li li I was uh, um, pulled up. You know, uh, and again, you got children. These kids don't know nothing about no prayer and fasting. They know, man, I want something from Sonic. You know what I'm saying? Man, you know, you pull up at the Sonic, and man, listen, listen and you know, Mayor know this, like, when they hit that 50 cent corn dog, hey, hey, let me tell you something. You know, they, hey, hold on now. 50 cents, all right? You know, now you know but you know what I started realizing? I, I did a little research on this. Uh, cool Joe, I love you, man. Um, it, it, they did a little research on this. What was interesting about about that, y'all? Do you know that um, most fast food restaurants see the largest dip in their profit in the month of January? You wanna know why? Because there are folks just like you and I who decided we're gonna get ourselves right. <laughs> um, y'all, all the spinach in uh. And Walmart is gone. <laughs> it's gone. All the fruit, little fruit sacks used to be full, ain't nothing over there. All right? And and li and listen, they ready for it. They know we coming. Like, all right, we're going to stock you up, but it's still going to be empty. But since they know that we going to try to get our little self right and snatch that waist back in shape, you know, you know what they're doing? They are marketing um, half off. Uh, fifty percent off. Y'all not y'all not praying with me. Listen, you ain't you don't ever get promotional mail. Y y listen, y'all got Burger King handouts. Y'all am I lying? Y'all got Pizza Hut handouts. Uh, you even got a little Subway handouts up up in there right now, and it's marketing at you. Let's pull you back. You know what it is? Um, they are mass marketing temptation in the face of you trying to get yourself right. Folks don't care nothing about you. They want their money. I want you to be healthy. I want to be paid. So they are marketing at your struggle right now. Can I tell you something? You, you do know that the world markets towards your struggle. They, 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 don't, they don't care anything about you. I, I, was, I was watching this um, yesterday. There was a young lady um, named De'Erica Hamby who played for the Las Vegas Aces in WNBA. Um, short story, she now plays for the Los Angeles Sparks um, because there was some contract negotiations with, within, her, um, within her team and organization that they were struggling with the idea, hey, um, I don't think you're going to be ready for the season. Um, and the reason they were doing that, because essentially what she was saying, went to Instagram to share about was they had made it clear that they did not like the fact that she had gotten pregnant while during the off season. Um, and while she's pregnant during the off season means that she can't train, means that she can't necessarily be a part of regular team activities. Now, the issue that she had was, was that now, how is it in a league that's all about women's empowerment? How is it that in a league that is all about um, making sure we take care of mamas, making sure that we um, uh, uplift our, our ladies, now all of a sudden says, we're going to punish you as an athlete because you want to be a mother. Um, but, that's, but what they market is, is that they're about that action. But when it comes down to it, 
we got to get paid and win championships. And so what we, you know what, I, you know, I just, nah, I don't care. No, you, you, you didn't think enough about the team when you decided to get pregnant. Wait, what? These are her words now, okay? But that makes sense for a league and a team that talks about women's empowerment. And we're going to make sure we take care of mothers. But isn't it strange that those people who you thought would be your people to take care of you are the ones who are causing you the most harm? Y'all, people market struggle. Meaning, what, what do I mean by this? Um, they don't care that you struggling as long as you can give something that benefits them. Um, do you realize that the same thing happens in your own internal struggle? Y'all, we struggle with our flesh because in that moment we want what we want. And when we want what we want, we are, here it is, world, here's the word, craving something that takes care of a moment. And when we crave something that takes care of a moment, we're quickly learning there's a lot of moments when I got pulled into something and I was too deep once I realized where I was. Lord have mercy here. Um, you you, you got to understand that um, the world has properly positioned all the things you like. Oh, God help me. Um, everywhere you turn, your vice will be present. Everywhere you look, the stuff that you like the most is going to be on the shelf. So what does God have to say to us about temptation? We have to understand, here's the message, real simple, real early. Here's where I'm ending. I'm telling you right now, God always provides an exit door. That, that's what it is. First Corinthians chapter 10 is going to teach us um, about how we get to the exit door. But before we get there, we have been given by Paul uh, a snapshot from Exodus, learning from this brother named Moses of how people who are going and should have got to an exit door. Um, but they didn't fully get all of them get to the exit door. All right. Uh, and they had a way of escape. Temptation ain't no joke. Y'all look at this. I want to read this real quick. I'm on, in New Living Translation today. I don't want you to forget verse one of first Corinthians chapter 10. I don't want you to forget, dear brothers and sisters, about our ancestors in the wilderness long ago. All of them were guided by a cloud that moved ahead of them, and all of them walked through the sea on dry ground. In the cloud and in the sea, all of them were baptized as followers of Moses. All of them ate the same spiritual food, and all of them drank the same spiritual water, for they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them, and the rock was Christ. Don't miss that. Yet God was not pleased with most of them and their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. These things happened as a warning to us so that we would not crave evil things as they did or worship idols as some of them did. As the scriptures say, the people celebrated with feasting and drinking and they indulged in pagan revelry. Then we must not engage in sexual immorality as some of them did causing 23,000 of them to die in one day. Lord, help. Nor should we put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and then died from snake bites. And don't grumble, as some of them did, and then were destroyed by the angel of death. These things happened to them as examples for us. They were written down to warn us who live at the end of of the age. If you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptation, here it is, y'all, in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Background of 1 Corinthians, real quick, um, is written in 55 AD, is written from Ephesus, is written to a church that is divided. Um, we're talking about the message of the cross all throughout the book. Um, chapter 15, as we talk about if there is no resurrection, um, then there is no Christ. We're making sure that we understand there's a supremacy of Christ all in this book. Now, from chapter 7 through 16, um, Paul is responding to their letter. Um, Paul wrote, they wrote back. Hear what they said. These jokers tripping. Paul wrote, 
I like this. They wrote back. Hey, man, here's what happened. Um, these people not listening. Um, they're not giving. Um, they're not praying. They don't hang out with each other well. Um, they be cussing at folk. Um, they hoe a little bit, praise God. Um, they, they act up a little bit. Um, and I don't really know uh, what we're going to do. Paul writes back. So hear me. I need you to hear the content of chapter 10, all right, is written in response to what they asked him to address. Hear me. He ain't just like, y'all didn't ask me, so I'm going to tell you. No, you asked me. Y'all, listen, uh, can, can I tell you right now when you call me? Okay, if you're asking, cast these bothers me. If you asking for my advice, don't be triggered when I give you my advice. When I tell you what I'm going to say, you asked me. So, chapter 10, hey, y'all the one who wrote the letter. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you now. So what does he do to open up the letter? He goes back to an Old Testament ethic and narrative, watch this, that even then folks were struggling with. Hear me, ready? Is the Old Testament really enough to give a Christian ethic to live by? Maybe y'all read your Bible. Have y'all been through Leviticus lately? There are some of us who are trying to get through the Bible in a year. I'm so mad that you've sending me that stuff, Pastor Lowe, because as we get through Leviticus, when we get this person, I'm going to be like, hey, hey, dog, hey, we're going to have to swim the Psalms real quick because right up in here, it, it be struggling. You feel me? And and um, and um, people right now have a struggle like maybe 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 maybe, um, maybe the Old Testament is not really a good way to give the Christian ethic to like we should follow any of that. Um, Christ is not in the Old Testament. So we're going to follow Christ. This happens in the early church. Um, essentially, there's this brother named Marcion who is, is essentially a full heretic who only believes that the New Testament can be seen as supreme, but in only certain parts of the New Testament. And then half the Old Testament should be archaic and thrown out. There's a whole lot of us who treat, Lord help me in here, who treat, Lord help me in here, who treat the Old Testament as some archaic book that we only pick up to cross-reference what we see in the New Testament. And we, act, or we can't live by it. Paul literally sets them up with an Old Testament ethic of what they was doing or what they didn't do. So here's the explanation. Verse 1, I don't want you to forget, dear brothers and sisters, about our ancestors in the wilderness long ago. All of them were guided by a cloud that moved ahead of them, and all of them walked through the sea on dry ground. If you don't read your Bible, let me explain to you what's going on. He's talking about Moses and the people of Israel in the wilderness. These folks have literally been saved from slavery. God has got them out by literally opening up the sea, setting it apart so they can walk through on dry ground. God has taken care of these people. He's taking care of them. He's going to give them a land full of milk and honey. He's going to take them into land of promise. And God used Moses to be their leader. And they followed after him. And in the cloud, they were guided. Lord, help me. God gave provision. God gave sight. God gave his presence to his people through the leader named Moses. Verse 3, all of them ate the same spiritual food, all of them drank the same spiritual water, for they drank this from the spiritual rock that traveled with them, that rock was Christ. Do you see the parallelism that's going on right here in the Old Testament that we can now put to the New Testament narrative? Watch this. Um, there's a parallelism of baptism. Lord help. There's a parallelism of communion. And then there is Christ. Jesus. Um Rewind. Um, there's a baptism that happens for the believers. There is communion in how they eat and drink. Um, and then Christ is present. That is the New Testament narrative and ethic. What happens to the believers in Christ? Thank God for there's this thing called baptism. 
Thank God there's this thing called the Lord's Supper we have every first Sunday. What do we do? We celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and his um, coming return. And we drink and eat like he's coming again because he is coming again. But the reason that we do it is because of the sacrifice of Christ. The reason we do that is because Christ is present. That's 1 Corinthians 15. If there is no Christ, there is no gospel. And so there is a Christ, there is a gospel, but Christ is not in the Old Testament. Um, Paul wants to remind you of one thing real quick. I don't know if you know this, but the folks at the time, as they were traveling through the wilderness, do not have canes, do not have McDonald's, do not have Sister Mary's sugar shop in order for them to eat and drink. God literally had to open up heaven and provide. He literally had to open up heaven and provide. And when they got thirsty, when they needed something to drink, there was not Lisa's purse with extra water in there. They only had the water that came from the rock. And the rock that provided was Christ. The rock was Christ. I'm going to say it again. He shows up in a place, in a spot that people were not paying attention to. What Paul was saying then is that they were experiencing the Christ before they even knew what to call it. They were experiencing the presence and provision of God that came from a rock. Come here, um, First Peter. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. He's been the rock. Um, so he's saying all these folks have experienced Christ. All of them in the fold, Lord help me, all of them in the fold, they've been baptized, experienced communion, they've walked with Christ. Look at verse 5. Yet God, Lord help, was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Look at verse, oh Lord, they, they are under the umbrella. You ready? But not in the family. They're under the umbrella of provision. They've been, Lord help me, they've been baptized, they had communion, uh uh-oh, and they've been with Christ and they still ain't in the family. You do realize that there's some folk who call themselves Christians, who call themselves members of a church, who call themselves on a roll, who are experiencing the good gifts of Christ and ain't in the family. Watch it, y'all, please, don't miss this. God was providing for people he wasn't pleased with. God was providing for people he was upset with. But there came a stopping point. Lord, help me in here. Y'all, there's some people who are going to have to experience a stopping point in the grace of Christ because you're going to keep running to a point that you don't realize you ain't even in the family anymore. Um, y'all, there's some people who don't realize they're not family. Baby, you're not, you not family. Um, I know y'all, I know y'all, and if, and if you have one of y'all in here, y'all got big families, I know you do. Y'all, y'all be at reunions talking about who that is. You know, that's why I'm, listen, that's why we need to make sure we keep putting name tags at the reunion. Who baby you is? And even with the name tag, maybe I still don't know who you are. Why? You don't show up. You don't come around. Wait, 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 wait. Or it's not just that. You know why they don't come around? Because they grumble. They whine. They complain. Can I prove it to you? Look at verse 6. These things happen as a warning to us so that we will not crave, there's that word, evil things as they did. They worshiped idols as some of them did. As scriptures say, people celebrated with feasting, with drinking. They indulged in pagan revelry, and we must not engage in sexual immorality as some of them did, causing 23,000 of them to die in one day. Um, let me, let me, I'm not making this up. Um, They engaged in idolatry while claiming to be under covenant. Oh, God, 
I'm trying my best. They engaged in idolatry. What kind of idolatry? I'm so glad you asked. Name it. They worshiped idols. What's an idol? Anything that takes the seat of supremacy where Christ is supposed to be. So put it, put whatever there. Um, drinking, gambling, fornicating. Um, and those are the ones we talk about all the time. We don't say gossiping. Lord, help me. We, um, Lord, and that's why we go, go and go right now. We, we don't really talk about our indulgence. Oh, God. We, we don't. Listen, anything can become an idol. Lord, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Fashion can become an idol. Oh, shopping can become an idol. Lord, I don't want to do it. Sports can become an idol. Jesus the Christ. You name it, it can become an idol. Money can become an idol. Talk about it all the time. It can become an idol. You name it. And since, Lord, they were claiming to have covenant benefits, but their worship showed that they didn't. So the, here it is. They're complaining at God about God not giving them what they needed, but they're worshiping elsewhere. You missed it. They're blaming God for their lack of, but they're worshiping at a place that's saying, well, I want you to give me what I need. Now, how in the world are you mad at God for your lack, but you worship at a place that you expect to give to you? And it's happening in 2023. There are people blaming God for their lack, but they don't worship at the place they're blaming. You at least ought to be consistent. You ought to blame the place you worship at. You at least ought to be consistent. If you're going to blame at this spot, you ought to worship at this spot. No, no, no. But that ain't what you want to do. You know what the family members do who don't know nobody? You know what they do? You know what they do? They show up to the reunion, don't nobody know their name, and they leave with eight plates. <laughs> don't they? Don't nobody know their name. All right, because, man, it was good. I'm a holler at you. Ain't put in a dime for a paper plate. Ain't bought an ounce of foil. Ain't cooked nary meal. And the oldest are like, man, I don't even like the food they got this year. What they doing? But walked in there expecting a plate. You want covenant benefits and have done nothing to be a part of the family. Blaming God for a lack. And this ain't the family you were part of. He says, we, we, we gave this as an example. This, this, this was an example for you. Why? Um, as you walked in idolatry, I wasn't feeling it. So what, what does God do? <laughs> what does he do? Um, verse 9, nor should we put Christ to the test, as some of them did. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh, this is not funny. Um, nor should we put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and then died from the snake bites. Y'all know what God did? They were, it, it, was, it, it, it was the fact they were whining. Like maybe, maybe I'd been okay if, if you were outside the family and shut up. But it's the fact that you ain't even with me and whining. And God sent snakes. <laughs> it's not funny, but it is. And handled them. You will play rough? Okay. Here you go. Handle that. And now people are like, oh, what's God doing? Is, is, God being, is God being mean? No. It's what the children call it. He's matching energy. I'm just matching your energy. Because what you're giving me, I'm going to give it right back to you. Look at verse 10. I'm almost done. Um, and don't grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the angel of death. Here we go now. Verse 11. These things happened to them as examples for us. They were written down to warn us to live at the end of the age. I don't want to tear this place up, but I want to be careful what I'm about to tell you, okay? You are on the other side of the example. You know what that means? Those things happen as an example for you. Um, meaning, this could 
slash should have been you. You know good and well you be trying to take benefits from stuff and then blaming God in the process. This was supposed to be you. Paul says, you better change the way you talking to God because you could have been the example. It could have been you in the 23,000. This was given as an example to you. Now, why is he writing all of this? Because of what they crave. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Look, look, look. I'm, 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 tr I'm trying to get there. Um, these things happen as an example for us. They were written down to warn us those who lived in any age. Verse 12. Um, this is what my mom would say and my grandma used to say. Oh, you smelling yourself, huh? You, you somebody, huh? Verse 12. If you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. Uh, Rob, one theologian wrote, you better check yourself. Huh? For you wreck yourself. You better be careful thinking you're untouchable. Y'all, you keep playing with God. You gonna mess around and find out. <laughs> Keep playing with God. You're going to fool around and find out. I ain't going to be on the other side of this. Y'all, we used to have a healthy fear of God. Hear me. Not like, you know, I'm, not like, oh God, I reverence you. No, I'm scared of you. Like, I love, I, God rest her soul, I love my Nino, I love my grandmama, I love her, but I was afraid of her, because I know at any moment, she could knock me out. I am, you laughing, I was scared. Man, I ain't never seen, have y'all ever, this grandmama's had a way of making any household object a weapon. <laughs> Y'all, I got beat so bad one time with a house shoe, I had flashbacks looking at him in the store. Like, I ain't know a house shoe could hurt that bad. You know what I'm talking about? Why are you looking back, Kim? Don't do that. Well, no, don't do that. No, you know what I'm talking about with a little rub at the bottom? Y'all, that thing tore me up. I'm scared for my life. Y'all, hear me out. Um, you've been saved by God and from God. You, you, you know, God saved you. Oh, Lord. Uh, but he also saved you from himself. You, y'all, do you realize God about that action? Y'all be playing, oh, God loves us. He loves us. He will knock you out. I ain't about to play with nobody like that. You mean you have all power in your hand and I'm sitting here looking at you and planning my date to sin? I ain't going to play with you like that, cuz. Y'all be treating my dude like he's some play play. He will wipe you out. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. And here's why he's telling you, don't play with me. That's why he's saying don't play with me. Look at verse 13. Why? Um... The temptations in your life are no different with others' experience. You're not special. Oh, God, it's, it's, man, it's so rough right now. I got, you're not special. Everybody feeling this. You're not special. Everybody's experiencing this. And, and look here. Hey, look, don't play with me because I'm faithful. Look, look at the text. God is faithful. He's faithful. You better not play with me. Let me tell you why. Because I ain't switching up on you. But I am going to hold you accountable to the way you live. Y'all going to stop treating me like I won't hold you accountable. I'm giving you as an example. Hey, I wiped them out. I wiped them out. 
Hear me, I'm not saying I'm trying to do that to you, but I am saying your continual habitual sin can show enough grieve the spirit and I show enough can't be pleased. And so the way I was taken care ain't going to look like it did before. Y'all got to stop acting like your lifestyle is not going to end up catching up with the way God wants to take care of you. He's going to continue to keep loving us, but you're not going to keep treating somebody who's been doing all this stuff for you any kind of way. Man, you like, I'm faithful. And here's why. I wouldn't have a hard expectation on you if I didn't always give you an exit door. The expectation is there because I always have an exit door. I know you're tempted. I know you're tempted. I know you're feeling it. But part of the problem is, is that you're expecting me to get you out of stuff that I have equipped you to get yourself out of. What are you saying, Pastor Vince? Can I show you what Paul writes to the same church who wrote the same letter, asking the same questions in chapter 9? Thank you. In verse 24, it says this. Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training they do it to win a prize that will fade away but we do it for an eternal prize so run with a purpose in every step i'm not just shadow boxing i discipline my body like an athlete training it to do what it should otherwise i fear that preaching to others i myself might be disqualified he is exercising self-control god is saying you keep putting the burden on me to get you out and you had lifted one single ounce of weight in self-control. Part of the issue with our temptation is that we don't want to get in the gym of self-control. This is why we own this fast. Because if I, y'all, if I get good at saying no to myself, I will get a whole lot better at saying yes to God. You've been too busy saying yes to you, and you don't have room to say yes to God. I ain't got time to go do that. Well, of course you don't have time to go do that. You spent the past hour playing the game. Of course you don't have time to do that. You spent all the other time scrolling, looking at this. You've been shopping for something you can't afford for the past hour. Amen, somebody. I'm talking to me too. Okay, here's what I'm trying to explain to you. If you keep saying yes to yourself, you ain't going to have the bandwidth to say yes to God. You say, hey, I provided you a way of escape. You don't know the way because you don't have lenses of self-control. If you just put on the lenses, you can see the exit sign. Okay, I'm done. Have, um. I, I, this is funny you hear past four. So um, in, in uh, at First Baptist when I was a kid, um, you know my my uh, my auntie, you know she uh, uh, plays piano there, helps lead worship, and so you know she had the key to church, and so she'd be responsible for locking up, and um, you know even early as a kid, um, I uh, how do I say this? I was I needed glasses early. I struggled with seeing. And so my little big old head, chubby face with the thick glass built like this, um, I lost them at church during choir rehearsal. And uh, she cut all the lights off, didn't know I had, like, hey, 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 I can't see. All right? So I'm trying to find my glasses, and, the, and right above the door, before the exit, oh, there's this little red exit sign as you're coming out the door. All I could see was the red sign. But um, I didn't just, I'm just not going to assume that that's what's going on back there. Um, I was better able to see the exit sign once I put on my glasses. I'll say it again. I was better able to see where the exit door was once I put on my glasses. Y'all, um, self-control are the lenses you got to wear to be able to see where the exit is. Um, the, the, the reason you're so bad at temptation, I'm so bad at temptation right now, because we ain't none of us lifted in self-control. We got to get better at it. We got to get better at it. Do you want to know why they struggled in the wilderness? Because God was, Moses was telling the people, I got you. He's going to provide. He's going to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. I'm going to give you everything you need. But while I'm telling you this, you don't see it immediately. So you crave stuff that has an immediate pleasure, but it has no sustainable benefit. 
Hutch, I love you, but I only need one more king cake. <laughs> Can't do no more. Can't do no more. I love you. I only need one more, Doc. You heard what I said. I ain't stupid. I ain't say none. <laughs> I said one. <laughs> you feel me? You feel self-control. Lord, help me, God. Here, here's what I'm saying. It's on me. It's on me. It's on us. It's on us. Y'all, you, yo, have you realized your productivity change over the past 14 days? Have, have, you, have you realized you feel a little better, don't you? Have you realized you're thinking a little bit more clear? It's because you're in the gym of self-control. God working on you. So when temptation comes next time, I'm not saying you're going to bat a thousand. I got to, um, come on. Hey, they pay people a lot of money, Adrian, to hit the ball three times out of ten. They pay them a lot of money. You're not going to bat a thousand. You're not. You are not. You're going to see some stuff. You're like, hey, hey, dog. Hey, I, I mean, I ain't, I ain't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm trying not to say I, I, I slipped up on this one because I ain't mean to, but it, you know, but but I'm trying. Here, here's what here's what it will do. You don't come to family gatherings anymore with an expectation without a heart of worship. I'm in the family. I'm in the covenant family. I, I, I've, I've experienced communion. I've experienced the baptism. I've experienced Christ who is the rock. I've experienced all of that. So I dare not <laughs> look to him and blame him on what I don't have enough of. He promised to give me more. Let me say it again. He promised to give me more. Also, that was just prayed over you prophetically here by Pastor Boy a second ago. He promised to give you more. But you better not complain. Don't do that. Don't you test God like that. God, you're not good. You don't want to give me good gifts. Don't play with me, boy. Don't do that. You don't want that smoke. Don't do that. Uh-uh. You don't want that. No. So when you see others who used to walk with us, when you see people, I'm not just talking about Circle Church, I'm talking about the kingdom fellowship in the body of Christ. And you're like, man, what is going on? Why are they out here doing this and blaming God and blah, blah, blah? They aren't consistent. They're blaming at the covenant family, but worshiping elsewhere. Here's the best thing you can do for them. Pray for them and then remind them, hey, look here. You can't be blaming God about stuff that he has equipped you to be able to work through. God got us. And, and get, I, I don't know. This may not apply to everybody, but I sure it applies to uh, uh, half of black Christianity. We, we, we messed around and, and let, uh, um, Lord, forgive me. Kirk Franklin, jack up our theology in verse 13. I've come through the fire. I've been through the flood. Broken into pieces, lightning flash from above. Through it all I remember. He loves me and he cares. He'll never put more on me and I can bear. I don't have a problem with the content of what he's saying. But please don't apply it to verse 13 of this passage. That don't match the content. Why? What does verse 13 say? And I'm done. The temptations in your life are no different than what others experience. God is faithful. He will allow you a place of escape. God is going to put a whole lot on you. But Kirk didn't preach about the exit door. God going to put so much on you, you're going to think he hates you. I'm not going to like that. They don't preach that. God going to put so much on you. Like, man, you, are you mad at me what I did? Man, you got so much on your plate. Like, how about what? 
hey man, look, you don't know the exit doors there, but it is. God is going to make sure you have what you need and provide all that you need to make sure that even while you're struggling in this temptation, you ain't never somewhere without an exit place. Let me pray. God, you, you, you're good. You do all things well. God, would you help us? God, there, there are folks in this room and they're struggling. We're struggling. I'm struggling. And God, we need to be able to see that what we're struggling through is not in vain. God, the cravings and desires of our heart are all because we are so busy trying to fill ourselves up with something that can't satisfy. God, only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy, God. God, the continual, perpetual, providing rock that you are. Only you can provide and satisfy. For that person who has yet to experience that growth and that grace that comes from you as our continual, perpetual corner, stone, rock, I pray they will receive that today. And for the rest of us who have received, help us to draw near to you right now. And we will be able to see how you're continuing to work in our midst. God, we love you. We thank you for this time. And we give it all back to you because you're good and you're worth it. In the strong name of Jesus, amen. Wasn't that a good word? Amen. Amen. What I find amazing is is Pastor Smith and I used to, uh, I used to reach out to him and ask him, hey, what text are you coming from today? And, you know, what's the theme? And, And I stopped doing that a while back. And I stopped doing it because, you know, the spirit has, has spoke to my heart that whatever I give you is always going to be in tune with what I give him. And I find it interesting that I hadn't spoken with him whatsoever. And I started the service off talking about temptation. And then Kim led us in worship in the vein of the theme. And then he concluded from another text preaching about the exact same thing. And an exit way out. And how Jesus used the word of God as the exit way out and so i just find it so interesting from start to finish how the holy spirit and when when the when the minister got up and he did his prayer it was all in the same vein and spirit that the spirit put on all of our hearts to share today and so as we go out this week we pray that that we would all be in the same spirit the same holy spirit is speaking and watching over us all. And so as we continue and we talk about discipleship this week, we pray that whether you can make it to those city groups or not, that you will spend time, intentional time, in the word of God this week and in tune with the spirit. We want to offer you, if if you are a first-time visitor here, an opportunity to complete a connection card. Sister Lisa is filling in for Sister Daisy today. And she can give you a connection card. We want to pray for you. We want to offer you the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Last Thursday, I preached in the prison, and four men gave their life to the Lord. The service before that, three men gave their life to the Lord. The service before that, four men gave their life to the Lord. And so there are men that are accept- There are people that are out there still receiving this gospel. And it's the same gospel that he gave Pastor Smith to share, he gave me to share, and he gave all of you to share. And so men and women are still responding to this gospel truth. And so we want to give you the opportunity to receive Christ if you haven't already. We also want to offer, if, if you haven't been baptized and, and you feel the Lord calling you to be baptized, or if you're just a first-time visitor, if it's your first time ever visiting with us, we have a, a special gift bag to give you. But we need to know that through the connection card. I want to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord through your giving. We at the Circle Church don't don't overly 
um, solicit for people to give, but I, I just want to read a text to you. I read it last time I was up here. It comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6-9, through 9, and it says, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. We don't want you to experience that this morning. No pressure whatsoever. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. If you've been with us for any a length of time, the Circle Church is a good place to sow. And uh, if God puts it on your heart to give, please do so before you depart. City Groups, again, will, will start uh, this upcoming Wednesday. There will be three uh, homes that will be hosting City Groups. Uh, the Hannahs, uh, the Malleys, and the Smiths. And so I'm not sure, Pastor, are you, is there a list or is, is there a, a way? Can, can you just let it? Okay. All right. Say it again, Pastor. All right. So just get with one of us three if you can make it. Uh, and, and you're more than welcome to be a part of any one of those city groups. All right. We're all going through the same lesson. It's just three different locations. All right. want to also uh, extend the opportunity for you to, to give to uh, Sister uh, Kim T. Hada's ministry, God, God's Hands Ministry. She collects toiletries socks and underwear and some of our members have uh partnered with her and uh given to that ministry so if god has put it in your heart to also do so please see sister kim can you raise your hand sister kim in the back if you want to bless her ministry i always want to give you the opportunities to answer the call and serve okay we we stop asking hey you want to be a part of this ministry but if god has put it in your heart to serve and answer a calling on your we want to extend you that opportunity to do so. And we have plenty of different areas that you can do so in our ministry. And before you depart, let's just take a moment to fellowship again, shake someone's hand, tell them have a blessed week before we close out. All right. So uh, without further ado, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I forgot you were you were in the zone. I texted you too, but I forgot. Hey, um, I, I don't know if you, you got a chance to to meet or hear from them. So Pastor Foy, who just came up here to pray, uh, Pastor Foy is the now pastor of my childhood church, uh, First Baptist Church in Rayville, Louisiana, and so they have traveled to come to check on little old us, and uh, it means the world um, to me that they came to visit with us. But here's the thing: I, I, I know y'all know. Um, um, pastoring is not for the faint at heart um, and God has richly blessed us to love and cover uh, and pray for our leaders I know y'all do it for me I feel it all the time and you come and tell me that you do it so I, I appreciate that you're, that you're doing that um, but I, I want to make sure that they have what they need as their strength and to go back and so you know what to do, but they don't know what to do. So Pastor Ford, Sister Ford, could you come stand right here for us, please? We want to pray for you. Um, and um, now hear me, if y'all are, are weird about folk being around you, then, then we can stretch our hands, but they're going to put their hands on you and, and, and cover you in prayer. So just come stand right here, and then uh, y'all know what to do. Come on. And I'm going to ask Pastor Los if he would close us out in prayer like he already was and just pray over them. Um, for their strength, for their courage, for their health, um, and that God would um, sincerely and richly take care of them. Um, Y'all, we need each other. We need each other. Um, we need each other. I say that again. We need each other. Um, and they need to know, even now, right now, that God is willing and able to take care of every need that they have. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Please extend your hand out to Pastor Foy and his wife. Gracious God, 
we just thank you so much. We feel the presence of your spirit right now. And we just ask you, Father God, that you would extend your grace, your mercy, your favor, your love, and your anointing over Pastor Foy, his wife, and his church. And Father God, we ask the same for our church and our ministry. Father God, we just thank you for the man of God who sacrificed to, to drive down from Rayville today to spend time with us. We ask you, Father God, that you would cover him, that you would bless him with a new anointing. And Father God, that you would give him a love and desire to chase after you every single day, to chase after your word, to chase after your purpose, to chase after your service to his church, his family, and his community. We pray, Father God, that his ministry would be a beacon of hope in Rayville. And we pray, Father God, that we will, they will begin to see transformation, Father God, of marriages, transformation of families, transformation of men, transformation of women, transformation of the future generations through their children and their youth ministry. We pray, Father God, whether we see it or not, that there will be a revival that takes place in Rabel, Father God. Well, men and women will chase after the anointing of Jesus Christ. That you will begin to see families transformed. Because we know that if families transform, then communities transform. And if communities transform, then the city will transform. And so, Father God, we just ask you right now that you would put this vision and this mission and the strength and the ability for Pastor Foy, his wife, and his church to be able to lead that charge, Father God. That they will pastor with other local ministries, Father God, and make a transformative contribution to Rayville and the surrounding areas, Father God. That you would do, as we would say in the benediction, exceedingly and abundantly above all that he can ask or think. But the key in that verse is the power that works in us. And so, Father God, we ask that the power of the Holy Spirit to strengthen this man and this woman. The power of the Holy Spirit to strengthen this church. The power of the Holy Spirit will strengthen this community father god as only the holy spirit can and so father god we thank you here today and father god as we extend out our hands we come in agreement with this pastor with his family with this church saying that we believe father god we believe father god that all you have promised in your word will come to pass whether through us or the generations behind us, Father God. We believe them to be so. And so, Father God, we pray for traveling grace and mercy for, for the pastor, his wife, as they head back home. And we just know, Father God, as, as we partner with them, we will hear great things that you will do through this church in this community. We also ask the same for ours right here in Alexandria, we see what you're doing. We appreciate you, God. We love you so much. And we just thank you that you continue to grow each of us here today. May you use us mightily to fulfill your plan and purposes for this ministry in Alexandria. We love you so much. And we thank you, Father God, for the many blessings that you continue to give us now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy 
To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Our service has ended. Go in peace. Fellowship. Shake someone's hand. Worship the Lord in your giving before you depart until we meet again. God bless you all.